Well, thank you all for attending. We'll, we'll jump, jump right, right into the content. content. So, fuzz, fuzz testing, testing is the process, process of testing the area of the app with general data. data. It's, it's different, different from conventional unit, unit testing, testing because you are not trying to verify the functional requirements of your code. Instead, Instead, we're looking for true programming errors, such as memory safety bugs, unbound resource usage, and plain old crashes. Fuzz testing has not been widely adopted in the industry yet, yet. but we've had a lot of success with it on one way. In the past three years, we've caught four CDs via our fuzzers. Our fuzzers have also caught many other non-security bugs that are still full of bugs, and we improved developer experience by fixing them. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the operator fuzzers on one way to demonstrate the impact. First, First, before writing a puzzle, we need, need a library, library to test. test. Up, Up here, here, I threw right together a very implementation of a C++ function. This function unescapes new line characters in the input string. It works generally well for the majority of inputs, but there are a few problems with it. Let's focus on the indexing. Notice that the index i is incremented in two places. Under certain inputs, we might end up incrementing outside the bounds of the string and read a character that's not part of the string. That is invalid behavior in C++. Let's write a fuzzer that can catch edge cases like this. So first, to write a fuzzer in Envoy, we need to create a fuzz input schema. The input schema indicates to the fuzzing engine the types of data to generate. The previous library takes in one single input parameter, a string. So we create a protocol message that has a string field. Now the fuzzing engine will generate random strings. Next, we write our fuzzer. For this library, it's very simple, three lines of code. We use the standard libprotobufmutator macro to define a callback function. This callback ingests a generated input and passes it down to the library under test, the unescape function. Now, when the fuzzer runs, it generates random strings, one string per iteration. Here is some possible strings it might generate. Our hope is that the fuzzer will generate that last string, the string with a trailing backslash. This input will cause that undefined behavior in the library under test. Our fuzzer running with C++ sanitizers will catch that and report the error to the developer. So now the key question is, how does the fuzzing engine generate strings like this? If the strings are completely random, it might take it a lot of trial and error to create a backslash at the end. So the answer is that it's not completely random. This is where continuous fuzzing with coverage guided fuzzers come in. Continuous fuzzing is essentially running our fuzzers 24 seven in the background. We combine this with coverage guided fuzzers. Coverage-guided fuzzers employ a feedback loop to generate inputs. These fuzzers use code coverage as the input signal in the feedback loop. So every time these fuzzers run, they generate a random input and then score or rate that input based on code coverage. The fuzzers can then explore other state space, new inputs that rate higher, that have higher code coverage. It boils down to an optimization problem the fuzzers are trying to optimize against the input space, and the loss function is inversely proportional to code coverage. So this whole concept of continuous fuzzing with coverage-guided fuzzers is a solved problem at Google. We have two open source frameworks that any developers can use. If you're a high impact open source project that is used widely across the web, you can integrate with OSS Fuzz. This is managed by Google, and it's completely free for you to use. If your project doesn't meet those requirements, you can run ClusterFuzz on your own infrastructure. That is all I have. Thank you.